Thank you so, so much. That yeah. did a lot of justice to the question. So um, our viewers and guests, like our special guest has said, we are able to change the situation of things and it is very too late if we fail to take action from today. Okay, so going on, Zipasi, the next conversation we want to have in form of a question is, considering how well you have done in the agricultural sector and how much you have been able to achieve, what really inspires you and, um, to sustain that your belief in Africa? Considering how you began the journey, the opportunities you received, your choices to still keep the roots going. Take for instance, you have traveled out of the country, currently you are in the US, or you are still rooted in your work going on here in Nigeria. What keeps that motivation going to still have your initiative in Nigeria going, your passion for Africa going? What keeps that inspiration alive? Yeah, um, thank you for that question. You know, a lot of motivational speakers will tell you um, aspire to inspire in order to conspire or something. You know, mm -hmm. I was never a fan of motivational speakers. I, I, I read a lot of books, but I think um, what inspired me was inspired me was the fact that I grew out of hunger. You know, I was trained by a single woman, and um, this particular woman. I, I mean, that are very well disrespected in most cases, you know. So this single woman trained four children with a child with autism, which we don't really have systemic support for in Nigeria. So I saw the pain of a single woman, you know. Um, of course, as she was training us, um, we have jet poverty, we, we, we rely on what we can even grow within our home and stuff like that. So, and um, I realized that it takes a single man to change the story of his or her generation. So, and I felt that, you know, I was the one at that particular time to change the history of my family. And um, I asked myself, the its integrity, you know, I felt that, you know, regardless of status, uh, social status in life, if you fail in place of integrity, then you will not amount to anything in life. So um, this really motivated me to stay on the line, to do the right thing. And um, my passion to salvage Africa, you know, during that particular time, I have my circle of friends where people, you know, below the poverty line as well, you know, I really learned a lot, you know, during that particular um, time. And going to school, Futa, University of Ibadan, you know, I mingled with people, I saw the reality of our country. And I felt that, you know, as I said earlier, Africa has a lot of resources, you know, I should not be studying agriculture and still be complaining about um, abject poverty and eating hunger, you know. So I, I, I decided to build what I had on me, because um, I knew that, you know, uh, the competition in Nigeria is very high, you know, getting a job is very difficult and stuff like that. I asked myself, what can I do with my life? So um, I started Protect Ozone, you know, just to help people. And along the line, I discovered that help started coming, you know, resources started coming to, you know, support my work. Um, to let you know, I started Protect Ozone in... In 2017. So it was even a very long time to get it registered, doing this all for free. But in 2017, you know, the US consulate in Lagos, you know, they recognize the work we do, they started supporting us financially. You know, in 2017, they funded us. In 2018, they multiplied the funds by two. The German government, you know, funded us. And I mean, I would like to tell you that. Um, when I was going to Germany, I was invited to the G20 summit in Germany, you know, to speak on the world without hunger. So um, I was denied my visa, but along the line, they called me back, you know, you know, you know they, they, they apologized. I was given my visa, I went to Germany. But when I came back, the same embassy that denied me the visa recognized that not all African youths are what they thought. You know, they decided to fund us, you know, for a particular project. I think it is easy to, it's to help people out of poverty 
most especially every time I leave my country, I think I've been, um, I've been to almost all the continents, almost all the continents in the world. And anytime I travel, I am always less excited, but I am more excited when I'm coming back to my country. Why? Because, you know, I, anytime I travel that way, you know, I learned a lot on, I learned a lot on transit and in the country. And I just want to share the best practices back at home. So I'm more passionate to share the best practices back at home. So this actually makes uh, make, um, me at that particular time, you know, to be, um, uh, to be the choice speaker for NYC SDGs and so many platforms, you know, anytime we have the NYC orientation on camp across Nigeria and stuff like that. So this actually in life. So I discovered that um, faithfulness, um, dignity and integrity really helps to, you know, sustain your passion. You know, I mean, of course, have your mates, you know, they are making a lot of resources and you feel that sometimes you feel that you are more educated than them, you are more knowledgeable than them, you know, sometimes you feel probably you are better in some cases, you know, but due to the fact that you cannot compromise, you know, because of what you believe in, your principles and values, you know, it seems you won't, you are not going to get there, you know, but the truth is, um, I think integrity pays at the, at the long run. I mean, today, um, I'm a very legal resident here. You know, the first time I came to the United States, God has opened your way. You know, don't come back to Nigeria. You know, just get it done and get it done. The second time I came, I had the opportunity to do that. I mean, the first visa I got, uh, B1, B2 visa, um, it was a two years multiple entry visa. I only came to the United States for seven days. You know, the second visa I got was a J visa, you know, where I was invited by the US government, you know, and uh, we got a letter from the president, President D. Donald Trump, you know, <laughs> Donald J. Trump rather, you know, welcoming us to the United States. I had the opportunity to like, if I had a choice, you know, to stay back and remain illegal in the country, but I decided to go back to Nigeria. And um, even coming back for my PhD was something I never planned for, you know, I never applied for a PhD program, but you know, one of the important for you to get something bring back in Africa to help your people, you know. The faculty heard about the work I do back at home and it was like, oh Sipasi, are you interested in this? Then you know, mm -hmm. they offered me the opportunity. Yeah. So Great. yeah, I, I hope that answers the question. I don't know. Okay, thank you so much, Sipasi. Um just to add to that question considering how i'm really really excited how you mentioned value breaking points relating to how nigerians how we put ourselves out there once we gain all of these op opportunities will determine how the other african youth will be considered take for instance when you had the opportunity to stay back and actually remain illegal you chose to go back and replicate what you learned there in the US in your organization here in Nigeria, which is a pointer for all African youth to maximize all of the opportunities they get to validating our African dream and our African vision. So yes, so let's go straight to the next question. Um, facing the realities on ground, a lot of Af realities of the world that we are faced with right now, um, is it still possible for a young African to start off uh, his or her engagement in building the Africa we want? Is it still possible? <laughs> twenty fifteen is not the same as twenty twenty. So yes, yeah, let's hear from you. So um, the truth is, life is getting more challenging um, the the issues the concerns we faced back in 2015 when i started a very small organization in africa it's totally different from the ones we are facing now for example no one knows that a world our world could come to a point whereby nobody will be able to move from one place to another freely Nobody believed that everyone in the world will 
get to use face masks, you know, almost 20, I mean, almost 12 hours in a day, nobody believes. So, I mean, I appreciate or I acknowledge the fact that, you know, the challenges are different. However, in this unprecedented time, I feel that is when we can be more innovative. For example, see what is happening in Senegal, the Nigerian doctor that, you know, um, is a Nigerian doctor or the African doctor that develop, uh, developed um, a local um, respirator, you know. Mm. I mean, that is, that is just so amazing, you know. And a lot of things are really going on. So the more harder it gets, the more opportunities that lies in there, you know. So the route might not be like my route, you know, the, you have a unique route to yourself. So it is very possible for young people, you know, to achieve their dreams, trying to help Africa. But there are some things you have to do. Number one, the world is being more challenged than ever before. So you need to be strong. So if you are not strong in Africa, sincerely speaking, nothing will happen to you. Like you cannot move. You would rather retrogress if you are not strong. So imagine just Nigeria, we're about, um, we're about um, 200 million people, about 70% of the demography are youth, and we are competing for jobs that are not there. So you need to be aggressive. You, know, you need to be very strong. This is not the time for you to be weak. This is not the time for you to be wary. So many people are competing for 2020. For me, I am achieving more in 2020 because I was able to re-strategize. So, you know, in Africa, all we need to do is to be able to re-strategize and bring solutions to what is happening right now. For example, I feel, in my own personal opinion, that the African government are doing better than some Western world in terms of this COVID-19. And um, I have a feeling that we can actually achieve more in the area of COVID-19, talking about camp, um, contemporary and alternative medicine, you know, which is rooted in Africa, we can achieve more, you know, if you really concentrate your efforts on that. So I'm not saying that you should go, everyone should concentrate their efforts on camp, I mean, contemporary or alternative medicine. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm trying to say is that, you know, let us see opportunities within the curtains of um, the current pandemic, you know, and beyond. Um, also, for you to be exceptional in this unprecedented time, you have to be innovative. You know, you have to be innovative. Like, things are not normal any longer. I had that tricycle back at home now. You know, they only pick two people in Lagos and stuff like that. So the price jumped from 100 Naira to about $300. Oh, sorry, to about 300 Naira per person because they have to pick two people. You know, these are things that are... These, like, be innovative about it. But one thing we do, I think we don't do well in Africa, is, you know, is own startup, um, probably a farming business, a poultry business, then on that particular street, you might see another people trying to, you know, emerge. So the truth is, why can't we just, um, why can't we just synergize, you know? I don't think the synergistic effort is being is there. I mean, it's one of our spirit in Africa. You know, everybody want to be a CEO, everybody want to be a founder, and everything. The more we continue to do this, the more divided we are going to be. So why don't we bring our resources together? Why don't we bring our energy together? You know, so that we can achieve a common goal. You know, when two people come together, they can achieve far more than a, what a person would actually um, achieve. Um, Another thing I think we need to do at this particular time because of the opportunities we have in our generation is to hold people accountable. I feel that we don't hold people accountable enough in Africa. For example, here at K-State, I mean, Kansas State University, even though the university is giving us their best, you know, trying to make us feel comfortable as black people, you know, as... Um, at this current time and the pandemic, you know, with the news that international students should go home um, and stuff like that, you know, all those things are overwhelming. And the school is making effort, you know, to make sure that, you know, we are sane, we are fine and everything. But we still have some student groups, you know, that are still telling the university that universities are not doing enough. Even though I know they are doing enough, I feel they are doing enough rather. So 
I just feel that we need to.